Hello, so in this presentation I'll be teaching you how to make a topographic profile using a contour map or also known as a topographic map. Alright, so this is just kind of a goofy demonstration of what a topographic profile and a topographic map look like. So we used potatoes and every 10 millimeters we marked a new contour line. So our contour interval is 10 millimeters or I guess one centimeter and this is the side view or the profile view and this is the top view or what you typically see on a contour map and this is what I'm going to be teaching you how to get from a contour map is the profile alright so this is just an example of what you might see in real life if you were standing in this valley looking at the mountain that's what we're talking about that's what a topographic profile is so you see just the edge of the mountain as it goes up you see a steep slope and then it comes back down a more shallow slope so that's a topographic profile and that's what I'm gonna help you construct but using a contour map or a topographic map alright so this is a simple map that I just threw together really quick in Illustrator now before we look at anything else what you should be looking at pretty early on is this information at the bottom of the map this, inf this bar scale over here represents a thousand feet of horizontal distance. So as we're traveling this way, it means every time we've gone this far, we've gone a thousand feet. Now this contour interval represents vertical displacement. So between each contour, we've either gone up or down 20 feet. So over here, we see that our first contour on our topographic profile line is 40 feet. So as we go up to the next one, since we're going up a slope we know that we are at 60 feet and we know that we're going up because we can infer that from the things that are marked here and so we know we're going up a slope so this next one's 60 then 80 then 100 and so on so one other thing I want you to notice on this slide is uh, when we're constructing in topographic profile sometimes you'll have areas where you don't cross a contour line for a little while now what you need to infer from that is not that it's just a straight line or a flat top but it probably still goes up a little bit since it's a hill it just didn't go up 20 feet in elevation so that's why there's not another contour line same thing down here in the valley you need to realize the same thing you hit an 80 foot contour here and then it's a, quite a while until you hit another 80 foot contour and so you need to infer what's happening. Are you going down or up a little bit? So you're coming really close to this contour, which is your 60-foot contour. So if you're going from 80 and you're going really close to the 60, you can guess that you probably went down a little bit and then back up to 80. So just some things to think about as we're creating our topographic profile. All right, so this is the same map as before. I've only cropped it. Uh, for the sake of space, but I want you to remember that our contour interval is 20 feet. That's the important piece of information for this exercise. And our graph down here, my x-axis is the same distance as my a to a prime, and my y-axis here is elevation. So what we're going to do is just imagine that you're traveling this a to a prime line as kind of a trail. And as you go on the trail, you're going to go marking every time you cross a contour and what that elevation is. So our first elevation that we cross starting at our A, we start by crossing our 40 foot contour. We know it's 40 feet because down here it's labeled. So we're going to make note of that on our graph. So when we start off, we're at 40 feet in elevation. We put a dot and mark our 40, 40 foot elevation at that location on our line. The next location is at we we cross our 60 foot contour so we're going to make a mark there now we're going to do that for every every time that we cross a contour on this map we need to project it down and make a mark on the graph so that we know what the profile looks like so there you have it unfortunately for you it won't just magically appear and you'll have to go through each time that it crosses a contour You'll have to project it down to your graph and put a dot on its respective elevation on the y-axis. So that, uh, that's what happens when we connect the dots. Again, remember 
that we can infer what happens here and here and here. Don't just draw a straight line because something is probably happening between these two points. Uh, just because we didn't go up another 20 feet, that's why there's not another contour, remember that. It doesn't mean we didn't go up at all. We might have gone up 15 feet or so. So just remember those things as you're creating these contour, uh, this topograph, these topographic profile. All right, so I'm going to show you one other way to construct a topographic profile. So if I were in the lab in just the classroom and I needed to construct one, sometimes it would be easier to use this method. So I just take a piece of paper or a straight edge that I can make tick marks on and I line it up against my 8a prime line. And every time I cross a contour on my 8a prime line, just like before, then I'm going to just make a tick mark on my paper. And this paper where I'm making the tick marks is going to represent my x-axis once I line it up with my graph later on. So I'm going to make sure that I mark every time I cross the contour and write down next to the respective tick mark what elevation it represents. Then I'll take it here to my graph. I'll line it up again, and then every time as I travel along the x-axis or the a to a prime line, once I hit that first tick mark, I know I'm at 40 feet in elevation. I hit my second one, I know I'm at 60 feet and 80 feet and 100 feet, 120 and 140 and so forth. So we're going to create the same result. Perhaps this is just a more practical approach if you're just in the classroom setting. Uh, so yeah, those are two ways to construct a topographic profile. I hope it helps, and good luck.